My name is Yaniv Moyal, and I'm a family court lawyer. And uh, I'm here to talk about the uh, legal system in uh, and family law here in Israel, and all the related, which is welfare and uh, police, uh, which um, all together is basically the rule of the law that influence people who want to split after marriage. Um, basically, what I see here, I see... <laughs> Uh, uh, a legal system that is pissing me off and I'm thinking that everybody is fucking liars. <laughs> They're all lying. <laughs> um, I'm really, really mad. I'm mad. And I, I want you to know that if you think that um, um, all the uh, false claim about uh, men are deadbeats and don't want to pay and women that, that take their kids away, that's because the women are not that good of a parent. It's bullshit. It's not that. They take, they take kids from good parents and they do it by lying. There is a whole system of money transfer, of uh, child uh, abduction, uh, of child selling, and, and um, this is really ridiculous. And I see it every day that uh, this system is corrupt from the start. You want me to tell you exactly? Yeah, how you just go for it and say um, yeah, really I, what's I'm on your really mind. Pissed. I know. I'm really pissed. This Let's is, just start. I'll Can tell I, you one story. You are an Israeli Jew, aren't you? No, you hear. Yeah. Uh, I just want to check you. Know. I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> telling you one story. There is a, a, a welfare um, um, agent in uh, Bechemish. She decided to conspire with the, a mother to take a kid, transfer to a foster house, foster home, take the money that the foster parents will get, and split it with the mother. All this done behind the back of the father, that it's a really good father. He was getting his kid every day, for, every week, for four days a week. He's still a guardian on the kid. He's a joint custody with the woman. Now, they conspired two months ahead before they went to the court to actually take the kid and transfer it to, to uh, um, a foster home. They didn't tell the father at all. The woman claimed that she cannot handle him, uh, uh, her two kids. She had one kid from that father and another kid from another. And she decided that, um, she claimed that she uh, sick of it and she might kill herself or whatever. And they said that she might did, she tried to, to commit suicide. And, and she wanted help. At the day that they went to court to ask for transferring the kids to a foster home, they called the father and asked for his opinion. Mm. He said, of course I want my kid. They said, uh, okay get to the court. The court with an emergency order took the kids and transferred it to a foster home. For two months, the kid lost about a one and a half kilogram out of his weight. He stopped eating. He came back with, uh, I, I mean, it took me two months to get him back to his father. And the welfare uh, agent in Bechemish uh, uh, did everything in order to smear the family of the father. They start digging from 1986, what happens to his mother when she was married to his father. And they were start, they went to court and they said, she's too clean. They went to her house. Her house was too clean. She probably sick. <laughs> Like OCD. Because she cleaned too much. OCD, clean. Yeah, she cleaned too much. Oh dear. And the judge told him, a clean <laughs> house, it's not a reason to take a kid away. And he, and, he, and he gave the father the kid away. But they're still insisting of consider this uh, child as, um, as uh, under uh, supervision of the welfare system. So this is a case that really criminal. They're pretty much criminal. Those uh, 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 welfare uh, agents are really, really criminals. They lie all the time. I have a kid that um, since the age of three, he's been abused 
by his mother and his boy and her boyfriend and he comes up with the uh, uh, hematomas in, in his body and he's claiming that they're beating him doesn't help they never write that he get uh, hit by his mother in the reports they lie to the courts they cover up everything and they do everything in order to to smear the father that wants to help this kid so I see that they have kind of a personal agenda and um, you can't trust them. And, and what pisses me off, that the court system that was supposed to protect me as a citizen and protect those fathers or their kids, the, those kids, is doing a shitty job. Really shitty job. They don't care about evidence. They don't do evidentiary hearing. They get a report from, from a, a welfare uh, agent and for them, it's enough. They move the ball away from them. I don't care. The welfare system say this way, that's it. So the and then they basically workers. are rubber stamp right. everything. Everything they rubber stamp. So the social and workers can just say anything. Yes. And there's no impunity. With impunity. They, they can lie. And they do lie. I want to see one judge. You know what? I will stop respecting this, this country and the court system when one judge will write one thing. I'm ordering the police to investigate the welfare agent if she claim a false report to this court. As soon as they're gonna have one judge like this that will state that sentence, I will stop respect them. Until then, I don't respect any judge in this country. They're all chicken shits. <laughs> That's how he called it. Uh, uh, yeah, this yeah, is exactly, yeah, yeah. This is exactly how uh, the president of the United States called Bibi Netanyahu. I'm calling, I'm giving the same respect <laughs> to judges in Israel. <laughs> you went to Geneva about this, didn't you? Oh, yes, I did. You did? Yes. Um, and you didn't just go because you made it up. I mean, you didn't just make this up and go for, you know, a free weekend, did you? No, no, no. no. Yeah, it, was, it, was, yeah. it was hard work. It was hard work to convince those people. They, you know what? People cannot believe, I mean, that, um, uh, that uh, the system doesn't work. Everybody wants to go and uh, sleep very good at night, believing that the people that he appointed in office or in the, in the military, in the justice system, in the welfare system, that they're doing their job. And they, for example, when you see a criminal pass by, in the camera and everybody shoot him and it says he was raping somebody. You assume that he is a rapist. But consider how many people sitting on death row when they didn't rape anybody, they didn't kill anybody and just they, they, they actually build a case on them. Mm. Now think about this. How many people are going to the court system and they just want to get rid of them. And they say that you like this and you like that. And they, they like they know you. They get a report from five minute talk with the social welfare, with the social worker. And they think that they know the whole of you. Mm. And they say things, horrible things about you. If they don't like you, they say horrible things about, about you. And then you're going to lose your kids. This is the most important things in your life. The things that you work so hard to raise. And one day, because you fight with your wife, you lose them. Just like that. Just like that. Jewish family values, though, you need. No, there is no family values. Everything here is money. I mean, I don't believe in religion. Religion is meant for money. Court system meant for money. Welfare is for money. Everything is for money. I mean, you, you know what? You don't need all this bullshit. You can actually, in, in some countries, in Scandinavia, there's no even a family court. There's no such a thing, family court. You just want to split, you fill up forms. There is um, everything set up as an administrative thing. You go through a process, you get divorced, and that's it. You pay your, uh, your child support, and it's a percentage of your income. You don't have to worry about anything. If you don't make any money, you don't pay. If the other parents make money, he's paying. But the kids are fine. Here, no. Here, they have to... Now, people need to understand, because we had a, a religious law in here, and there are rabbinical courts controlling the divorce and marriage in Israel, 
they created another a separate court in, 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 in order to fix a problem, they fix a problem with a problem. It's like they, they wanted to fix the uh, disadvantage that women have in rabbinical courts. Mm-hmm. And the only disadvantage that they have, actually it's one disadvantage, that if the, uh, the husband don't want to divorce you, you may be stuck married to him until he decided yes. It's about 50-50 now. But, it's, but, but there is a lot of men that get stuck in marriage the same way, when women don't want to give them the divorce. So it needs to go both ways. But women organization use it as a, a means to actually say that men are abusing women and try to force them to give up their kids or to give up their uh, financial rights and stuff like that. This is all bullshit. So in 1995, they built a court system called the family court, which is the civilian court that basically meant to do to men what women state that the rabbinical courts do to them, and which is discrimination. If the rabbinical court discriminate women because they're women, so the family court discriminate men because they're men. So when you get there, they treat you like shit, like you're not a parent. You don't deserve anything. I'm doing you a favor that I'm giving you few hours to see your kid. Mm. And I'm giving you a favor that I'm not sending you to a contact center to see him under supervision for one hour a week. That's horrible. So, yes. And we have the suicide rate among those parents is catastrophic. This is basically a murder. But a murder by law. That means you go to a judge. He strip you out of your money. He strip you out of your rights for your kids. And basically, when you kill yourself, he murdered you. There's no other way to say it. I mean, you can sugarcoat it in anything you want. This is a murder by the state. When people are committing suicide because they need to separate from their wife, the country is murdering them. And, uh, and I'm not, I'm not going gonna, gonna to go back on those words. This is a system that actually killing people and really good people. Yeah. Doctors, the lawyers, only the only teachers. sin that they had that they got married and they wanted to split or the wife wanted to split. Then there there is incentive to a lot of women to split in Israel because the child support here is staggeringly high. I mean, you can actually make a baby from two from two uh, different uh, uh, guys. You have two kids. You have about eight thousand shekels from both of them. You set to life. You don't need to work. You just sit there. You have two kids. You did your thing. What percentage? And there's a lot of women do that. That do that. What percentage? They go. They meet another guy. <clears throat> there was a woman. I, I, there's a case of uh, a 36 year old woman who was uh, in the border of not having kids. She met a 19, 20 year old kid who was in the military. She did a kid with him, and she sued him for child support. She could be his mother, and she chose. She, she, she charged him to pay her child support when he was only released from the military, just starting his life. He hardly finished his studies in university and he needs to pay child support for that bitch that actually caught him and decided to do a baby with him. So now I know you like women as well because you know um, you represent some women. I, know I you represent have... women, of course. Yeah, of course I represent can. women that want it, the, the, the father to be involved with their kids. With the with the kids, if they if they if you are a woman that care about your kid, the same way you need to give him food, you need to give him the the idea of having a father in his life. The, you you ask me what a kid need more? Do he need more money or more time with his father? I will tell you, time with his father is more valuable than any money you can get. But women here in Israel are not like that. They think that money is more important, that they can buy their kids by buying them everything or not buying them, taking the money for themselves and not buying the kids. And not a lot of women that actually take child support and leave the kids with no clothes and with no food. And they say, go to your father, let him buy you uh, pants, Mm -hmm. shoes. They actually purposely send the kids with a torn shoe so the father will feel bad about them and go and buy them as in addition to the child support that he's paying. 
Now, mm. they have to understand, child yes. support in Israel yeah, how much is, is 100% on the father. So don't think that he's paying child support, that it's half and half for the mother. No, even if you have a joint custody, and the mother and the kids are half the time with the father and half the time with the with the mother, the father still need to pay the expenses of the kids at the time he's staying with the mother, including portion of her rent and her expenses that she would have them anyway if she was single with no kids. I heard from a lawyer today that child support is sometimes over a hundred percent of salary. People don't yeah, believe it doesn't, that. It doesn't it's not, work. It, not it doesn't, it's not like going. That. It's not calculated by the salary of the of the father. I mean, you can be married to a woman for twenty years and earn five thousand shekel a month, and she will earn thirty thousand shekel a month. As soon as you split, you have to pay child support, no matter how much she have, no matter how much money she make. You will pay from your five thousand shekels the whole expenses of the kids. What if it's more than five thousand? The same thing. How do they find the extra? How does the dad? Mean? Well, how does the dad? What if? Then you go to work for another job. Take another job. Take three jobs. Take four jobs. Work twenty four seven. Sleep two hours and work twenty two. <laughs> it really is like yeah. That, isn't they, it? they just tell you. Yeah, they don't yeah. actually say. Oh, I'm sorry, you need Sell a house. A Sell a kidney. Sell a kidney. Do you know you're the second person to say that to me today? <laughs> uh, but I don't think they, they, they say usually in in, uh, in judgments they state that the uh, child support you can sell assets in order to pay child support. The fact that you don't have income doesn't mean you can they cannot take your assets, sell them in order to pay child support. So if you bought a house. You need to dissolve the house and pay child support. So if you have a kidney, sell it. You'll have child support. I've heard it. I'll tell you. Why did you go to Geneva? Do, do you want to shame the country or change the country? Uh, basically, they work together. Yeah. When people get shame, they think they look at the mirror. They said, "Okay, I may be wrong, and I will change my act." Hmm. But I don't. I, I don't. I don't think a country. Is something that I need to respect. A country is a system, or a government is a system in order to give me service. It's a way to manage social life. And if that organization that called the State of Israel hurt the people in Israel, there's no value to it. The only value that can have a State of Israel is only if it serves the people of Israel. But if it hurts the people of Israel, fuck that. Who needs that? Half the people don't know about it. Have you yeah. noticed that half the people in Israel is that the gang? You know, is that it, closed doors? Why don't people know? It's different, and, and I explain yeah. the, the way that most people understand. Mm. You can hear about how to ride a bike, and you can write, read twenty thousand books how to ride a bike. And you will never get it until you get your ass on a bike and ride it yourself. The fact is that I can actually go and talk to you right now and tell you a lot of shit, that tell you stories or whatever. It's nothing until you get into the system and see how it works on you. As soon as you get in, when you get a false claim uh, at police, for example, when you are a man. Your words doesn't consider anything. She said, "You touch her, you touch her." That's no, no proof. They take your point. fingerprints. They take your DNA. They mm -hmm. shoot you like a criminal. They put you with criminals. You sit down for a day or two. They arrest you. They bring you in front of the judge. She said, "You hit her." Where is the signs? There is no signs. We don't need signs. She said, "You hit her. You hit her." There's no evidentiary. There's no rule of law. There's nothing. You don't have any rights. Then we get to you, this. The system is like that, designed like that, that they say, okay, because there is no way to prove because what happens between men and women in their own house, we consider if she said so, she is right. That give a lot of power to women that want to kick their husband away, and that's what they do. They go claim 
They know that they're not going to, even if they will find as lied on their claim, they're not going to be judged. They're not going to be prosecuted. So, you know, what's wrong? I'm going to go and file a, a, a complaint. They're going to kick him out of the house. I'm going to have the kids with me. He will have to start, you know, find himself. That's basically, I'm giving him, uh, um, uh, uh, I'm coming, I'm humiliating, send him out of the house and leaving him with no money, with no place to live. Some people are 40 or 50 going back to live with their parents because they don't have anywhere to live. So that's the, that's. So human rights are not the highest priority here, would you say? Oh, there is no human rights in here. There's no human rights in Israel? Listen, most people think we're living in democracy. We're not living in democracy. This is not a democracy. Some people say, oh, this is the only democracy in the Middle East. There is no democracy in here. When a government can actually put a stop exit on you from exiting the country, this is not a democracy. There is no such a, 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 a thing in any other country in the world that can actually stop you from leaving the country. In this country, they can stop you on everything. Just, just you're gonna stuck here. Now, when you think about uh, the, the uh, uh, separation of, of uh, 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 government uh, e entities, the judiciary, the uh, um, uh, the administrative, and uh, the lawmaker. When you think about it, uh, the when you go to court and you have a social worker that is from the uh, basically the administrative uh, branch, and she came to court, and the court consider what she said as the rule that apply. You don't have basically a judiciary because the judiciary is bound whatever the, the administrative said, it, said it, it's going to be. They're so trained by no weight, so somebody told me today social workers have a training school funded by weight, so. Yeah, the women's which is organization. Women organization. They train them there. Uh, they have their own, uh, you know, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, a system of thinking, a thought. They, they have like theories. Hmm. Um, but think about it. I see today the feminism as the Nazism in the 30s. Now, I know it's going to shock some people. And I said to somebody and he said, how can you compare? I said, listen, you judge Nazism today by your views of today, what science tell you today. But you go to the science of the 30s the 30s and the 20s. You go to uh, uh, sociology theories, and they had the idea that basically um, uh, uh, the social theories were actually differentiating people by race, and they believe it. The race or uh, the uh, Nazism was based on the, uh, the theories that they had at that moment. And they thought that this is the new age. Today, you have in uh, a gender studies, they have theories. Now they built those theories on the way monkey behave. Now they see those monkeys that the man is controlling and the woman is doing whatever he says or whatever, and they consider that men are the same, the patriarch uh, theory or whatever, mm. and they build it like all men are aggressive, all men are rapists, all men are sexually harassing, we need to uh, control men. We need So they build a system of rules that basically meant in order to diminish the man and hire the, the power of women. Now, the women don't have physical power, but they have legal power. So now they're controlling everything. You say something wrong about women, they go and they, they charge you. You go to prison. Basically, she had more power than you. That's true. What, so uh, they're getting billions, right? They're getting billions and billions and billions of dollars. Oh yeah, they're, they're, um, they know how to. They know how. Right to. now, we need to be fair on this video. So, how many billions are going into men's groups? Oh, we don't have any. Just we checking. don't. No, I, I'll tell you. Yeah, it's there a was serious some question. There were some men organizations that try to form in here. 
Now, the, the women organization was actually fighting them. They didn't want them to take whatever they achieve in the last 20 or 30 years in Israel, which is basically feminism here. <laughs> we have here, yeah, I, I, I consider it. If, if, uh, if you a feminist, I respect you. And for me, my view is the feminist is, needs to uh, uh, um, actually fight for equal rights in everything. Don't say because I'm not equal in this, I need to get advantage of this. This is not equality. You need to equal everything. No, we cannot equal, equal our powers, but we can equal everything else that is in our power to do so. But when you try to get advantage because you're a woman, and other people, that's an account of somebody else. So they stopped the men from getting the funding? Yes, and they did it very uh, smartly. First, you cannot organize. As soon as you organize, they lo they, you get a lot of lawsuits filed against you. If you don't have the backing in order to pay for the lawsuit for the representing in court, you're dead in the water. And the second thing, they find a way to shut a lot of activists out by filing a complaint on threats. You threat a judge. You send a judge something, oh, you threaten me. And then the judge go and file a complaint against you on threats. And you know, when you consider you go into the court system and they say that you threat a judge, it's the end of you. And that's how they discredit every um, uh, men uh, rights fighters, and they put every one of them in jail. Every one of them, they charge, they put them into the, the uh, uh, legal system, and they show him where, where the fish is peeing. So freedom of speech, mm -hmm. you're, you're getting a bit now. <laughs> You've yeah. got freedom here. The only things that you have here is freedom of speech until you cross somebody. Even my speech here now, can be considered uh, blasphemy against the court system and I can be sued. You can. Yeah, and you, you've been in trouble for questioning judges and... Oh yes, it's in the law. You cannot, I mean, uh, you have to respect the court system, you cannot, uh, this is... They have uh, here laws against... Uh, uh, actually, um, there is uh, a charge on uh, um, humiliating a public government official, official. <laughs> insulting a public official. Is that, does, that insulting that, that, government official? This, what, is, this is a charge. Like it's a, it's a crime. Yes, it's, it, a crime. it's classed as a crime. But a government official can insult you. It's not a crime. What about when you appeal? I mean, because you've told me that appealing is quite hard here. You cannot appeal. Here. You there's know, no there's no appeal system here. Right, because the UN says right um, when you've exhausted all the remedies, then you can come to us. Uh, with any claim you want to make. Yeah, they do, do in order to that? respect the country that they want to... Cr right. You see, if you want to criticize a country, you need to respect the legal system that yeah. if you have, and you go all to the Supreme Court and go... But listen, if you, if you go... They, they have several rules. And the rules are that you cannot appeal on the decision that the, the, the judge in uh, the... Uh, the lower court. court yeah. In the lower court decide as a fact. That means, if today is night, and the judge decided that it's day, you cannot appeal on that fact. Why? Because it's a fact. The fact finding is only to the, the uh, uh, peace court or the, the district court. Now, the problem is that the judge can fake the fact. Now, if the judge is a liar, what do you do then? Then, the lie he writes on the notes, go to the um, the district or the, the high, because you the keep high going up. And, yeah. the and they actually basically quoting the same stupid sentence that was a lie from the beginning. They say they have rules that uh, the appeal court would not examine the 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 uh, <laughs> the, uh, the facts finding of the. Uh, uh, of the uh, so have you been fined? Have you been have you been punished ever for appealing? You yourself? You, you uh, me myself as a person? No. I mean, as my, a lawyer, my, uh, your law firm? No. Um, they're hurting kids and they're hurting families. I mean, if you have a father that really wants to do good for his kids or mother, it doesn't matter. 
and they think that the, the uh, family court made a mistake. Now, I think it's a duty of the country to give them the option to fix that mistake. But in order to go to appeal court, you have to pay first um, the fees to go into the court. And then you have to put um, a guarantee in the court system, which is 20,000 shekels. It's like a five-time minimum wage in order for you to guarantee the expenses of the other side. So, see, but the court really care about the other side. I mean, really, you care about the other side? No, they want to stop you from appealing. They don't care in order to guarantee the other side. Mm. I mean, they don't, they don't give a shit on not the other side and not this side. They just put these blocks in order to block you from appealing. Now, let's assume a judge in a family court wants to make your life miserable. Basically, you will make a decision throughout the case that every time you want to appeal that small decision in order to continue on with your case, you will have to go and pay fees and put guarantees to get to the other side. And you have to, and they're all backing each other up. Mm. So, and it takes months. You go into appeal on a small judgment, for example, I have a case. Then the judge decided that this kid, 13 years old kid, needs to have a guardianship as a, as a lawyer, a lawyer guardianship in order to take care of all the legal stuff. So said, well, if you have a father, a father can represent her. No, he decided that he wants to appoint another lawyer for that particular kid. The kid doesn't want that lawyer. He doesn't care. I, he appointed, now, he appointed that, that lawyer to be as representative of the kid, but he decided that the fee of that lawyer will pay the parents. Now, one of the parents is poor, the other parents is rich, filthy rich. And he divided the payment half and half. Now, that means that the poor parents have to be more poor. And the rich parents doesn't care. She have enough money. This is kind of things that if you go on everything like that and go to appeal, you better yeah. shoot yourself in the head. And there's a lot of people that do that. It just, you cannot find the system. The system is so corrupt. And you corrupt in a way that it prevents you from getting your right to protect your own kids. Which is this the most awful thing you can do to people? It's to hurt their own kids. It is. It is to take someone's child of a. But listen, or... it's a system of a lot of money. I mean, you th think. Consider that we've got money. Two parents them. wants to fight in court. Mm -hmm. Every lawyer will get about fifty to one hundred to one hundred and fifty thousand shekels on the proceeds, on legal proceeding. That's three hundred thousand from both parents. Think about it. Now, when you go to court and you decided that you want joint custody, they have to appoint a social worker. A social worker need to work on the case to interview the father. And that, that's money for social work. Now, they say that the parents is not uh, getting along. They need to send them to uh, a treatment. What the treatment is educational parenting. Or a psychiatric assessment. Or a psychiatric assessment. Now, psychiatric assessment fall on both parents. That's 30,000 shekels to each one of them. So you have another psychological here and psychological here that make money. So we have lawyers. We have work for the judges. We have work for social workers. We have works for psychologists, psychiatrists, all these contact centers, all those organizations that are around it. So basically, it's a billion dollar industry. And this is go all the way on the back of kids. So when they say, when we have to consider the right of a child, the first person who will say that to you here in Israel, you better tell him, go fuck yourself. Well, we better get to the UNCRC.
and get an independent ombudsman. Yeah, but you think you think this is a very unique to Israel? No. No. No, it's not it's unique. It's all the developing countries, all the countries are democratic countries. Mm -hmm. They're all built on that system. They created a system that you will think it's for the good of the kids, but they're using that, the good or the right of the kid, and they built on it a system that was supposed to support it, that basically all what they do is they want to make money out of that kid. For example, if you take a kid for emergency center, that's 17,000 shekel a month to that kid on that bed. Now let's assume that this, this uh, emergency center is private emergency center, and those social workers are part-time workers on that emergency center. Now a social worker that is a government worker will go and look for a kid in order to fill that bed that just released in that emergency center in order to get 17,000 shekels from the government of Israel to that center. Now listen, most parents that are low-income families that always fighting, fighting. You, basically, you, you uh, the more you have, the more, the less you have, the more you fight because it's economic things and you try to survive. Whatever. Think about a family that will get not the seventeen thousand shekels for emergency. It will take five thousand shekels in their budget. Okay, they're not going to have that problem. You would have to take their kids away. They will have enough money to raise them properly. No. But they rather give the money to the emergency center than to give it to the parents. Another thing, take the, uh, uh, the idea of taking your kids to welfare or to uh, a foster home. Now, a foster parent gets from the government money. But most of it is involved money because the father cannot take the, the kids with him because he needs to work. So you take the kids and you move them to a foster parent. Now, instead of giving the money to a foster parent, give that money to the father so he can work less time, it's beneficial to the kids and the father. They're not going to do that. Why? Because all privatized. The, the entire system is privatized. Those companies that... that actually choose the, the uh, foster parents that examine them and built a whole system, getting portion of it. But it's, tra it's privatized and traumatized because it's traumatizing the natural parents and the natural children because they, they don't, don't want to go and live somewhere else. They don't consider, here they don't consider a natural parent as something that you need to fight for. Really? Yeah. So being a biological parent isn't the be all and end all here? Or no, they don't care about you that you have biological parents. They, they just may want to make sure how to get out of your kid the most money they can make. I know I'm cynical. Well, you've been doing but the job a lot. No you've way seen to, the, there's no way to explain the things that I see every day. There's no way to explain it. Well, you do it every day, so you're seeing it all day. Yeah. Do you love Israel, you mean? Listen, I lived 12 years in New York. And I came back here because all my family is here. And matter of fact, before I become a lawyer, or, I didn't even know this abomination even exists. And you think and you hear from the side, it's different when you hear from the side and you have, you see men's rights in the family and you see all the notes in the street and you see your demonstration and you see those parents that are really suffering. But until you see the cases themselves, you see the treatment that you get in family court, you see the kids suffering themselves, you can't believe that it exists. It's shocking. Um... I've been do I've been filming quite a few people this year, you know. Um, it's almost really weird to hear a good story. I mean, there are good stories. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, but, but the, the good bad stories, stories. I'll tell you what the good stories are. When you have a mother and a father that go go to the courts and through the court system. Yeah, those are the good stories. Those are the, the good, great stories. The great stories where the mother's fair, the father's fair, the kids are shared.
Yes. Um, the, the one that know how to solve it, but, 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 but if, listen, you have to understand that survival is something that it's instinct to every human being. And I understand women that actually fight for every penny they can get because they think this is the only way to survive. Survivor is basically uh, a fight for um, uh, for uh, resources and money. It's a resource. I'll ask you. Um, women make false claims. Have you heard or do you know if a social worker can encourage a woman to make a false claim? Yes, and That's, they do that. They do. Yeah, I have a woman actually, uh, a wife of one of my clients, that she is a clown. Her profession is a oh, clown. A profession. Yeah. And she uh, had um, a, a post to actually go to uh, um, shelters for women that were beaten by their husbands in order to make the kids happy. She came to me and she said, Yaniv, I cannot stand to go there. 90% of the women there never even got a hit. They are not abused. They're not nothing. There is a social worker sitting there and tell them and explain them what they need to say, how they need to say it, like they are really abused. And she said, I hate them. I see the kids suffering them. They're all sitting and saying, you should say this, you should say that. And they're teaching one another what they need to say. This is really, really weird. And this is not the first time I've heard. No, it's not the first time I've heard it either. Um, and it's hard to hear. And I, and I have a I case. I don't want to hear it. Listen, I have a case. Uh, it's a simple case. Uh, a woman won. Uh, uh, they had, she had an accident. She sued the, the uh, uh, insurance company. And she was supposed to get 200,000 shekels as uh, a remedy for injuries. Um, as soon as she got the money, she didn't tell her husband. She, she, went, she went to the shelter of of that kind of shelter and she asked for uh, basically uh, from a judge to give her child support so she got a child support from her husband she got 200,000 that she needs to share with him 100 that she didn't tell him and she took her kids for 10 months now when you're in that shelter you get 900 shekels for your expenses you get food and shelter for the kids and for you that means you have no expenses whatsoever so she didn't need chat support? No, but she took it anyway. With her 200,000 in the bank for later? Yes. <laughs> no wonder you smile. Now listen, she is a kindergarten teacher that belonged to Vizzo. Mm. And the Vizzo social worker told her to go to, to, to a shelter in Jerusalem. I'll tell you, Vizzo has been the topic of the week this week. Every lawyer that I've spoken to, male and female, talked about Vizzo, and there's the big Vizzo lawsuit that's just been served yes. by a woman, yeah. by a woman, right. uh, mother of daughters, yeah. against Vizzo. Right. So, uh, feminist- You see, I, I, ha- I had a client, a woman, a single woman, that she had two kids. The thing was the social worker does. She goes to her mother, to the mother. Now, the kids are about a year and a half or two. She's not she's not uh, uh, obligated to put them in any kindergarten or whatever. They force her to put them in a kindergarten that belonged to Vizzo. And they force her to pay Vizzo <laughs> for that kindergarten for, to keep the kids there. How could they do that if the children are under three? They can do that. I've got, sorry, yes, it's a They way. say, oh, you're young, you need to have some free time. You're not capable of taking the kids because they are like, make you crazy and we're afraid you're going to hurt them. So we force you. I went there to um, a meeting. It was a meeting with all the social workers and this. I said, leave her the fuck alone. And they decided to leave her the fuck alone. So the Rebbecha have a hand in it all. The social, the welfare, the Rebbecha. Mm-hmm. They seem to be dabbling in the whole family business. Yes. Yeah. Definitely, it's a business. It's a business. It's a business. 10,000 kids a year, I hear. Have you heard? You see, I, I don't know, Do the, you numbers. know the numbers. I don't. I don't know the numbers, but one is too many. I think one's too many. One is too many. 
So do you need some funding to change things? What, what do you need? What do you need the money for? Listen. In an ideal world. I in mean, an ideal world. Let's not get the billion in check. The, in the ideal world, I would have here about five or ten lawyers and secretaries and take cases, uh, have a social worker that is my social worker, have a psychiatrist and psychologist that can actually evaluate people and bring to the court a different um, point of view of what the social worker of the government states because we not allow to bring our own specialist or to give to the courts an idea of what is true and what is not. That's true, you can't have your own independent anything really. Yes. And the things that sometimes I need, for example, I have a really good case to appeal. I know the appeal will be succeed, successful, but the guy doesn't have the money to appeal, and you have to live with the verdict of the judgment that he got. And I know that basically his life is ruined. Now, in order to appeal, when you go to the court and they ask you for to put a guarantee to the expenses to the other side, Sometimes I need that money to put in the court system in order to give me the options to go into the door for, for the appeal court. And then if I'm successful, the money is coming back. So basically all what I need is that Just freedom cash to put the, the cash flow, to put the, the guarantee in order to appeal, to get the appeal done and then get the money back. So sometimes these things are really... Um, I'm really pissed off that I don't have it, but... You know what? Help. You said the state's murdering people. They're killing themselves. It's very catastrophic. A lot of numbers as well. Maybe you know what? the funding might just save I, I a life. Say, I save would a say kid, different. save a life. I would know? say it differently. This is killing with torture. For example, if you take a guy and shoot him in the head, basically one minute it's done. You did it to him, he didn't do it himself. But think about what you need to do up to a person in order for him to get to a point that he needs to take a gun and shoot himself. This is a process of torture. So it's worse than executing and killing. It's worse. It's really torturing people and then make them kill themselves. So this is what the government does. So the money might save a few. Yes. I think that will end on that. Thanks, Geneva. Buddy. <laughs>